I've been, um, I, and I mainly want to hit up the 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 really new music, especially and a couple other things as well. But I've been listening to the two released songs thus far, a few times over the past several days. Your hand and doing it on the flow. Um, well, I, I'll start with this before I get too deep into this. I've been in some of your other interviews. You've been talking about a new album coming up. What is the time frame on the arrival of the full album? Uh, for the holidays. Okay. <clears throat> right before the uh, the holidays. Cool. How many songs are going to be on this? Eight. Eight songs. And what's the title again? I I, I can't. Is it going to be doing it on the floor? Is it flow? Sorry, or is it another another title? That's that's the title so far. Okay. Very good. So refer to it as the title track. That song, like I said, I've been I've been listening to that, the instrumental, watch the video, the whole works on that. Um, you said I think in another interview that you did most of the instrumentation on this. Am I correct on that? Uh no. Okay, no. What who played what on this one? I have uh, some of everybody on here. Uh, uh Freya Wesley. Uh, James Gatson, uh, uh, Scott Edwards, Ernie Friedman. Uh, before he died, I did some stuff with him that wanted these songs. Uh, You got me. I got a whole lot of people on this app. That's good. That's 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 really cool. How many of the uh, folks that played on the album are in the video? I was I'm watching all the folks playing the instruments in the background. How many of them are also on a the couple, album? Two, okay. two or three. Yeah. Cool. Cool. When when you shot that video, I and I saw. Uh, was it one of the comments on Facebook? I'm trying to remember exactly where, but um, that there was a whole lot of traffic the day you were shooting the doing yeah. it on the flow video. So describe the day. Um, how how did the whole video shoot come together? Uh, it was interesting. We had some people bring some of those old cars and about and uh, had uh, uh, a bunch of my friends and fans get together and have a barbecue. That was the whole idea. I don't know if it appeared to be a barbecue party, but it was. Yeah. Uh, that's about the size of we were in the house up in Hollywood at uh, Manson. And we did it over there. And they had a lot of fun, really. Did you shoot some of the uh, Your Hand video at the same time? Because I noticed a lot of the same folks were in there. No, no. Okay. No. You... Uh, the people in Your Hand is a whole different audience. We had an audience there uh, standing up, clapping their hands. And uh, we did the other part in a, a young lady in the hotel room. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Um, those the the songs in particular. Um, I, I, one of the interviews I, I saw you, you hundreds of songs you've gotten written. How do you write a song like these? Well, we'll take these two because these are the the reference tracks. So if someone's listening to this interview, they're they're going to cross reference. Um, how do you how do you sit down and write one of these songs like like your hand or doing it on the floor? <laughs> you don't sit down and write doing it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah. Uh, your hand was a, another situation. Yeah. I mean, your hand, <laughs> that's one of my crazy songs. But uh, just, uh, I was talking to some lady I knew in the, we were discussing something like that, and uh, I decided to write a song about it. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of risque, but uh, I was hoping it would 
current enough, you know, it's in, re, in the reality of it is current, you know. Uh, so in a way, just another one of my songs. How do you know the difference between a song you write, you're like, okay, decent song, good song, and one where you go, this is worth releasing. This is one where we're going to do a video for this. We're going to put this on the album. How is there a way you know? Is there a certain feel you get when you know this is one that's worth putting out? Yeah. Uh, you have to feel it for one thing uh, yourself, and then you try it out on other people. And if you, they respond to it positively, you know that's it. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I think I got better stuff on the album than uh, doing it on the floor. But uh, uh, people like doing it on the floor. Uh, it, it's not me. It, I don't take the total responsibility I, I I try it out on other people first, see how they like it. And my girlfriend, I argue a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the closest people are going to have probably some of the best ideas of how everything's sounding. Is there going to be a third single that comes out before that, or is the album the next thing that's in line to come? Oh, I got a song that raises the hope of people that are stirring up the album with uh, called Follow Your Spirit. Everybody wants me to put that out. So um, that's, that's going to be the next single. Do you find your writing to be any different now compared to, I mean, you could choose any point in your life, but is the way you write, is the kind of stuff you want to write about at all evolved the way you arrange anything, or is it pretty much the same? How would you describe how you compose? I write about real issues a lot of the times, about what's really going on in life. And uh, I try my best to try my best to write songs to record. When I record a song, I try my best to get the best feeling I can get for the song. What's important is how it feels to me. Uh, and the, the lyric content is a very important, but that phone is distracting me. But, uh, but the most importantly, I try to make sure it feels good. So when I'm recording it, if I if I don't like it, I re for instance, Love Land. There's a song that I, I recorded 40 different times, trying to get the right feel because the band could not comprehend it. One day we did it, and that turned out to be the record. I I knew it while we were doing it. That was it, you know, and. I tried to express yourself with the band uh, before I did it. The one that we used, I ended up using just the drummer, myself and the bass player who would go in the studio and play to express yourself three or four times. And I took the third one and I put, brought it home, get, let the horn players hear it. They said, we don't like it. We don't want to play on this. And uh, I threatened them to go get some of my old studio buddies to play it. And then they grumbled and they played it. I took it to the record company's president and he said, it's a piece of shit. But I knew what it was because that feeling I'm telling you about, I was trying to get that feeling. And I, I captured that feeling that day. And we were working for a disc jockey in Detroit who owned a nightclub 
I gave him the first, they sent me two copies there the, when they really first came out. I gave him one of the copies. He went in his office, he played, he came out, said, I think you made a mistake this time, Terrell. Nobody liked it. But uh, that feeling was there, and I knew it. it I knew it would make it. Hmm. Wow. Wow. When, when you do go in the studio, I, 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 you, is there usually a certain number of times you gotta you gotta record to get a good take? The, I mean, probably not forty times every time, but it. No. How how much usually? I used to be a studio musician. Okay, be, before uh, the Watts Hunter Third Street Band hit, and I was uh, I go in the studio. It, it, there was a rule. You get three hours to perform, to uh, record a song, or, or however many songs you're going to record it. You book the studio for three hours. And that was it. I kind of broke the rule when the, with my band because my band were actually nightclub musicians and. Uh, they were not recording musicians. But I, so I would book the whole day and take my time doing whatever I wanted to do, thanks to Warner Brothers. Uh, and they gave me a budget I could deal with. So I would go in and take the whole day and I would record the song until the people got bored with it. After a while, you get to a burning point, you get bored with the song, you know. They're not changed songs. So you're asking me, what was your question exactly? Like how many, how many times, like how many takes do you do? And like does it vary? Are you rehearsed to the point where when you finally go into record, you you got it all down? What how does it usually work best for you? That first take is usually the best one. After that, you start going downhill. But unless somebody don't understand the music and you can show them, it takes them two or three takes to show them, then sometimes you take two, three, or four. Once you get past that, it becomes a bore. People get bored with it. So uh, I'd say within the first two or three takes. Do you find it, do you prefer to perform all live with the band all at once or are you recording separate parts at a time? I prefer the whole band. As a matter of fact, most uh, of our success music, successful music with the Watts 133 Rhythm Band was live. In some cases, I made it up while we were doing it. For instance, Do Your Thing, which was our first major hit. We did that while we were recording live at a nightclub in Hollywood where we played off. And the band was nervous that night because they had all those microphones set up there. We walked in the club and the first two or three sets were kind of stiff. And finally, the third set was loosened up. I started ad-libbing and I felt that while we were doing it. And I took it, cut that out, and took it home and let the band here. They didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> they, Somebody told me, don't put my name on that. But I put it out because I felt it. And, it. and it became a huge record. Hmm. What is, oh, okay, of, gosh, the thousands of songs that you've recorded, released, et cetera, et cetera, which one do you wish would have been a bigger hit if there is one and maybe there's not but is there one where you wish it, it would have gotten more attention all of them 
<laughs> Absolutely. I, I think uh, I, I got some songs that people never heard that I think they should have heard. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have um, a favorite? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm through. Do you have a do you have a favorite on the upcoming album? Or are they all your babies and you, you can't you can't choose one or the other? Is there one that's is there one that stands out that you'd like people to really take note when they hear it? I have to choose, yeah. Uh yeah, there's a couple of things here that uh to follow your spirit. The song I mentioned to you a little bit back back. Um then there's uh, without you. And I'll give you time. And I could go on and on. <laughs> I love them all. <laughs> yeah. I, I love them all. They, they like, you're right. They're my, like my children. Yeah. Um, you just did, I think I just saw the other day, you, you just picked up an award? Yes, I did. Uh, just last weekend. Yeah. What were the circum? What go tell a bit more? I was looking up a little bit. It was the the Hapa Awards, I believe. To tell us a little bit more about how you got that one. What? How did that come about? Did, was this planned? Surprise! How, the whole works. Tell us about this latest honor. I don't know. <laughs> All I, know I looked up and somebody was giving me another award. And and I appreciate it. Uh, go, this <laughs> this was called the Only But Good Year Award. Uh, uh, so uh, I I feel kind of like I was out of place. I went to the pick it up, man. I went to the red carpet, and there's all these young, beautiful ladies all dressed up out there. <laughs> Here I am with only a good award. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, coincidentally, I, I co-produced a hit record back in the day on a group called Little Caesar and the Romans called Those Only But Goodies Remind Me of You, which was a huge record. Uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, I. I appreciate it, even though I, I didn't particularly want to be there with just the oldie but goodie. <laughs> I feel like I was current, all right? I, know, I feel like I'm current. I try to stay current, you know? Well, and listening to, to a couple of your interviews, you've talked a lot about artificial drums, drum machines, the current trend, ten trend towards ten whatever is not a real thing. You got the real thing. Did you ever in your career ever work with the drum machine, or did you swear that off hundred percent the whole time? This is gonna blow your mind. Somebody came to our house. Uh, I think. Uh, in the mid eighties to tell me that uh, if you want to continue to uh, participate in the music industry in the record industry, you must go out and get an electric drum and an electric keyboard. I did. I went out and got it and uh, I'm trying to make this thing work. I don't have to argue with anybody about telling anybody in the band over and over again how this part is supposed to go. <clears throat> I can do this all by myself. I did it for about 14 hours a day for a couple of months. And before you knew it, I had something like the flu and I could not get over it. So I went to the doctor and told the doctor my problem. The doctor said, let me take an EKG on you. So she had a nurse take an EKG. 
and the nurse came back with the uh, sheet that it was like a map of my heart. And the doctor said, you better sit down, Mr. Wright. Now, let me show you this. Whatever this is on the side of your heart, it's going to kill you. Whatever you're doing, you better stop it right away. That thing had built a muscle on the side of my heart. That drum. Well, I had I was fortunate enough to read a book, a very, very good book by an African witch doctor called In Top of My Children. And uh he explained in their house, when you, a human being hears a beat, your heart synchronizes with it. So here I am with a, a machine that's beating my heart. It's only a metronome because I can't make it hell and feel it. And it's making my heart bigger than it should be. So I hate the electric drum with a passion. And I do not like false music. That's, I mean, it, assimilated music. That's not real music, what we got with this drum machine thing. And I've been on a campaign against it for the last 45, 50 years. Everybody bragging about hip hop, 50 years old. Hip hop is the death of music, of soul music. I am really glad to hear the real instrumentation on these two new songs and surely on the other six to come, on the album that's to come. Uh, Absolutely. Did, did I also hear there's, is there another book coming soon? Absolutely. Okay. About the same time I have them come out. Very good. What's in this book? You've talked a bit about it, but but tell me, what, what are we going to get in this one? Did you read the other one? I have not yet, honestly. I, and I was looking up to see if I could quick find it uh, in, the, in the prep, and it was not immediately available around here. So, no, I have not. So, for, for me mean, and for anyone listening, do tell. Amazon. Amazon.com is where you can find it. Well, give it a look on my phone here and yeah. get it on Kindle. But yes, the, the new one, where does it pick up from that point? Where the old one left off. Right there. Okay, perfect. What's the yeah. title of it going to be? Express Yourself. There we go. So it'll be an easy look up. Yeah. Very good. So it comes out right about the same time you said as the new album. So coming in, let's see, what's today's October... Today's October 12th. So within the next couple of months or so, we'll we'll yeah. get them. Around the first of the year, probably, yeah. Okay, very good. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm just finishing up the audio book right now. Um, very good. Yeah. Awesome. And, well, that, that this is great. we got all this material yet to come. Maybe more even still coming. To, you're, you're still writing and recording, so I have to imagine there's going to be more to come in the future. As long as God spared me, I'm going to be doing it. Exactly right. Exactly right. Well, this has been an honor to get to talk to you. And with all the music you've done, I was mentioning to my mom, who was in college back when like when you were having the top 15 hits and such, and saying, yeah, Charles Wright, here's the song. Da, da, da. He's like, yes, I remember that. So you've, you've crossed generations with your music. Thanks for doing what you've done. And thanks for continuing to do what you're, what you're doing. We're looking forward to the new album doing it on the flow, coming soon, coming around the holidays. Charles Wright, thank you for chatting today for the history lesson and for all that is to come. Thank you for having me.